In this activity, students will use what they learned in the last activity to make a prosthetic arm move. In the first part, we will show them, using instructions, how to make a prototype. Then in the second part, they're going to have to take that prototype and, using a creative engineering design challenge, figure out a solution to make it move using a hydraulic or pneumatic system. I'll start with the systems built in the previous activity and make sure that they work. The class will also need to have some pre-cut balsa wood, some rubber bands, some paper clips, a protractor, some scissors, and some masking tape. You should build one demo arm to help the students get started. You should join the three strips of balsa wood with a one inch notch in the middle, as shown. Then either using a nail or a paper clip, poke a hole through the balsa wood and thread the paper clip through the arm to use for the hinge. Make sure it can bend properly. This is what you will demonstrate for the class in the next part of the activity. For a prototype demonstration for the second part of the activity, attach a syringe like this so that the arm can move just a little bit. In this case, the arm has a very limited range of motion. The engineering design challenge presented to the students in the second part of the activity is to improve this design to make the arm move as much as possible, but without going further than 180 degrees. In order to accurately measure the angles of their arms, students will use a protractor. In order to use the protractor, the center point of the arm should be at the, the center point of the angle. The base of the protractor will go along one side of the arm on the inside edge, as shown here, and the measurement will be read off the inside edge of the other part of the arm. In this case, as you can see, the measurement is about 90 degrees. It's actually 92 degrees. In order to determine the total measurement of their arms, students will then have to find the maximum range of motion of the arm. So they will have to measure the beginning and end of their motion. Now we will measure the angle at the end of their motion. Again, put the center point at the center of the elbow on the inside edge. Now that we're in an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, we should read from the larger number, which is 153 degrees. Subtracting 153 minus 92 leaves us with a total range of motion of 61 degrees. That is the student's challenge, to create an arm that has maximum range of motion. Here we will show you a few different prototypes so you can see ways in which your students might design their arms. Some of them, you may notice, don't move backwards as quickly, but they do move forwards very well. These may be because their setups are different. For instance, the rubber band may work better in certain angles than other angles. As mentioned earlier, the important thing is the student's arm moves through as great a range of motion as possible and greater than the initial prototype shown by the instructor. It's okay if the arm doesn't return as quickly as possible or make it all the way to 180 degrees. These are areas that can be improved upon and if there's time left in class, encourage your students to improve upon these things. After the students have made their arms move, have them present their ideas to the class. Then, in the next activity, we're going to create some additions to their arm that make it even more useful.